Good evening to the 12th grade students, parents, and high school guidance counselors. Thank you once again for joining us for the Admissions 101 uh, workshop series by Knowledge at KPT. We truly appreciate your kind time to join us this late in the evening at 7.30 p.m. Uh, we have a very special guest here today, Ms. Tara Good from Embry Little Aeronautical University. And she's going to be presenting, as you can see on, uh, on your screens, the session topic for the day, Careers in Aviation and Aerospace. As you have seen in the outreach campaign, the first 30 minutes is going to be about the session topic for the day. And the next 30 minutes of the segment is going to be about Embry Little Aeronautical University, followed by which we'll be having a Q&A section. As you have seen, as you may have seen in the outreach campaign as well, I would kindly request you to please post all the questions in the Q&A box and not in the chat box. So it would be easier for Ms. Uh, Tara to access all your questions, as I'm sure she'll be very happy to answer all of your wonderful questions. The Q&A section will take place towards the end. So thank you, please post. So please feel free to post your questions as we go along the way. Having said that, I'd like to please welcome Ms. Tara Good. Thank you once again, Ms. Tara Good, for joining us for this presentation session for the workshop. We truly appreciate your kind time. I'm, I'm going to be handing over the stage and microphone to you. All the very best for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. And thank you to everyone who's joining me today. Um, it's my pleasure to meet with you. I know it's the evening there, so I appreciate you taking time out of your evening to learn a little bit more about careers in aviation and aerospace, and also Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. So with that said, I'll just show you some um, pictures to get us started, to get your mind thinking about what uh, an education in the United States might look like and the campuses that we have in the United States. So um, as was mentioned, my name is Tara Good. I'm the Director of International Admissions at the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Daytona Beach, Florida campus. And you'll see my contact information there on the screen. You're welcome to reach out to me anytime with questions. I'm happy to answer all of your questions. And uh, at the end of the presentation, I will be answering questions and also providing my contact information again. So if you didn't catch it this time, don't worry. So let's start by exploring some possibilities for your future. Did you know that nearly 66 million jobs are supported worldwide in aviation and the related fields? And of this, 10.2 million people work directly in the aviation industry. And at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, our strength lies in flight, engineering, business, technology, and space. And there's so much more that Embry-Riddle does um, than just focus on aviation and aerospace. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through the presentation. But I think I would be remiss to not touch on the current global state of, uh, of the world right now. So um, we are all very much aware of the global pandemic. Um, I know that it has impacted India, it certainly has impacted the United States. Um, it's impacted our personal lives, our work lives, and every facet, right? Um, so I think it's important to address um, what is happening right now. So um, not only is this pandemic impacting us personally and professionally, but you probably have questions about how is this pandemic influencing the field of aviation and aerospace? And I think the main thing we can point to is history. And this graph um, shows you some information about how the world has responded, the aviation world has responded to past crises. So you will see on this graph some different global um, issues that have come up in our world. And you'll see a slight dip um, when it comes to the revenue from passengers in the aviation industry. But then you'll also see a pretty steep decline after that. And so what this graph depicts is that um, the stake is not to know if the traffic will recover, if aviation traffic will recover, but when it will recover. We are more of a, a global climate than we've ever been before with people moving all around the world um, at a pretty fast pace. And so although we've been impacted by the pandemic, we also know that people are going to be ready to travel as soon as 
uh, travel restrictions are lifted as soon as people start to feel comfortable, the aviation industry will certainly take off again. And, um, and we are all looking forward to returning to some sort of new normal, right? Um, I, know, I know certainly here in the United States we are, um, and talking with my friends from India, I understand that you we all feel the same way. We are all in this together for sure. So with that said, let's move on to um, our mission for success and some fast facts about every riddle. And um, one of the things that I often bring up is that seven of our Embry Riddle graduates have gone on to become astronauts. This tends to really um, excite interested students, even if you're not um, super passionate about space, who isn't interested in the space program, right? So it's super interesting that um, our graduates have gone on to become astronauts. Um, and we have over 130,000 alumni around the world. We're ranked as one of the top five online bachelor's programs. So what that means for you is that if you're interested in studying completely online from your home country, that's certainly an option for you and you can earn an Embry-Riddle degree completely online. We're also the number one in aerospace engineering, the number one and only aerospace physiology program in the nation, and the first college of security and intelligence in the nation as well. As I mentioned, we have a worldwide online program and we've been ranked as one of the top online programs in the nation. But let's just generally talk about um, these fields of study because I think you joined the session because you're kind of interested in um, the fields of aviation and aerospace and what that might mean for you. What programs um, might you study, whether it's at Embry-Riddle or another university. So we're going to start with aviation and business, um, and we want to note the, that employment categories in support of air transportation are expected to grow by 25% through 2022. And this was a study that was conducted by Boeing. Um, and certainly, um, we have seen some changes. Um, our entire global world has changed since the pandemic. But in some ways, I think that we might see an even, even faster growth once we're able to get back to normal. Um, and with that, we project that we will need over 800,000 new civil aviation pilots, um, over 700,000 new maintenance technicians, and over 900,000 new cabin crew will be needed to fly and maintain the world fleet. And I'm sure you might even be aware that um, consumers of aviation um, are strongest um, within Asia. So um, the Asia aviation industry is growing more rapidly than any other continent in the United States. So that certainly means that there will be jobs um, in the field of aviation and aerospace uh, within Asia for sure. With that said, let's look over the bachelor's, master's, and doctoral programs that could be available to you within the fields of aviation and business. And I'll just highlight a couple of the programs here just to give you an idea. Um, for instance, you might see aeronautical science and think, what is aeronautical science? Aeronautical science is our flight program. It's a four-year bachelor's degree program that combines your flight with your academics. And what that means for students is that they, at the end of four years, they will not only have their bachelor's degree in aeronautical science, but they will also have their FAA aviation licenses to become a professional pilot. Um, so not surprisingly, that's one of the more popular programs at Embry-Riddle and what we're probably most well known for. Um, but as I mentioned, Certainly, there are um, going to be, there's going to be a need for other aviation professionals, um, maintenance professionals taking care of the aircraft. Um, that will be extremely important, and that points to our aviation maintenance science program. Um, but also, you'll see that we offer programs within project management, technical management. Maybe you're interested in unmanned aerial systems. Um, this is an incredible program. I'm sure you've heard of drones. I'm sure maybe you've even seen a drone. Um, they've become quite popular over the years. Um, and they're used for anything from global security to um, 
you know, definitely in the media, we use drones to take footage um, of things that we might not normally see from a vantage point um, that really gives us a, a higher perspective. Um, so unmanned aircraft systems is a fast growing field for sure. Um, and with that said, we will move on to engineering and space. And we are the nation's largest educator of aerospace engineers. Uh, so if you have interest in designing actual aircraft or spacecraft, this might be the program that you're interested in. Um, and we focus on real world research that could take you anywhere in the world while you're at every riddle. And a new generation of space professionals is going to be needed as all aspects of the space industry under, undergo astronomical changes. As space tourism is introduced, commercial space operations and companies are growing to help explore uh, space. So I'm, I'm sure you've heard of SpaceX and other private um, space operations companies that are popping up in the United States. Um, so certainly there are going to be opportunities for international students within this field. When it comes to our programs within engineering and space, you'll see our bachelor's, master's, and doctoral programs. And as I mentioned, aerospace engineering is one of our top programs. Um, but with that said, we also have astronomy and astrophysics. We have numerous engineering programs, including civil, mechanical, electrical, software, computer. Um, so certainly if you are interested in the STEM fields, if you're interested in engineering, Embry-Riddle likely has a program that you might be interested in. So many of these programs um, offer students the opportunity to really express their STEM passion and their STEM skills. The safety, security, and intelligence field is rapidly growing with individuals, corporations, and governments interested in protecting against cyber threats, natural disasters, occupational illnesses, and injuries. This is one of the fastest growing career paths in the world. And highly trained safety, security, and intelligence professionals are increasingly sought by businesses, governments, and military. And our bachelor's programs and master's programs within the safety, security, and intelligence fields are listed here. Um, as I mentioned, Embry-Riddle offers the first college of safety, security, and intelligence. Um, just to give you an idea of, um, of how Embry-Riddle is leading the way. Um, and so you'll see all of our different opportunities um, within this field noted here. Um, and we will move on for the sake of time to applied science. And at the core of applied science are math and research, weather patterns, human behavior, technology, aerospace, global security, whatever your focus, there's a research component to that. And that involves solving real world challenges. And within applied science, you'll see the opportunities um, range from aerospace physiology, which is a pre-med program for students who are interested in uh, potentially going on to medical school. The aerospace physiology program is the first of its kind that specializes within the field of space and applying that to physiology and biology. We also have applied biology, applied meteorology, one of the programs I want to highlight is human factor psychology, also known as ergonomics or the design of the workplace for human use. The human factor psychology program is a really unique program of applied psychology. Um, actually, this is the field that I studied for my undergraduate program. And what makes this really unique is that this is a psychology program that will offer you job opportunities at the undergraduate level, meaning that to find a great job, you don't necessarily have to go to graduate school. Um, but with that said, you'll see that we also offer a master's and doctoral program within human factors that will just open up more opportunities for graduates in this field. And with that said, I do want to move on to some more specific information about um, Embry-Riddle and the campuses. Um, and so you're probably curious, where is Embry-Riddle located? And we have two beautiful residential campuses in the United States. 
As I mentioned, um, I'm joining you today from Daytona Beach, Florida, which is located on the Atlantic coast. Uh, it is a lovely place to live. Uh, we are about, uh, the campus is about 10 minutes from the beach. So an opportunity for students to live, work and study right near the beach um, with lots of wonderful outdoor activities and beautiful weather throughout the year. We also have, <coughs> sorry, our Prescott, Arizona campus, which is located <coughs> in the mountains. Uh, just about an hour and a half north of Phoenix, Arizona. And um, this campus is located in the lovely mountains and offers all four seasons um, to students. So if you're interested in experiencing um, summer, fall, spring, <laughs> um, and winter, you will get all of the seasons, um, including sometimes they even get a little bit of snow. Um, and both of these locations are strategically located um, in, first of all, lovely places to live, but also we happen to have great weather for training our pilots. Uh, as I mentioned, that's one of the things that Embry-Riddle is most well known for. And so um, that is why uh, these locations exist where they do. It's a great opportunity for students to be able to flight train um, throughout the year. So um, we're not too influenced um, by weather um, as, as you would in other parts of the United States. With that said, I wanna offer you an opportunity to watch a video on the Daytona Beach campus. Sorry, I think I might've lost you. Let me try this again. So I hope you were able to see and hear the video. Luckily, it's just music. So um, if there were any um, audio issues, um, the visuals are the most in part, important part of that video. So that video highlighted the Daytona Beach campus and hopefully gave you a feel for some of uh, the imagery of what it would be like to be on the Daytona Beach campus. But I'll also point out some fast facts about the Daytona Beach, Florida campus. We have about uh, 6,000 undergraduate students um, and almost 700 graduate students. Um, so we're looking at a campus size of about 7,000 total students with over 100 countries represented on our campus. So we're really proud of the diversity on our campus um, with a large 17% international population. Um, and hopefully that population will continue to grow. Um, so there's definitely an excitement and a need and a thirst for uh, aviation globally. And I think that's why our international students seek out the best aviation and aerospace university in the world. Next, I'll give you some images of the Prescott, Arizona campus through this video.
So I hope you enjoyed that brief video on the Prescott, Arizona campus, and I'll be happy to share some fast facts about the Prescott, Arizona campus. You'll see that the Prescott, Arizona campus is slightly smaller at about 3,000 undergraduate students and 50 graduate students, so about half the size of the Florida campus with over 40 countries represented on the Prescott, Arizona campus. This is also a diverse uh, campus. Um, so both of our campuses would be considered small campus sizes in the United States. And what that means for you is that class sizes are going to be small. You're going to have more one-on-one -on -one interaction with your professors. Um, certainly as an Embry-Riddle alum, I felt very connected and I felt very, um, like I very much had the opportunity to meet with my professors when I needed to or when I had questions. I also felt very connected to my fellow students because classroom sizes are small and we offer so many opportunities to connect with fellow students. I certainly felt connected to Embry-Riddle and the campus and the students, faculty, and staff. We also have an Embry-Riddle Asia campus that maybe you aren't aware of. Uh, this campus is located in Singapore, so I do have students from India that are sometimes interested in staying a little bit closer to home. Um, and so if you are interested in staying a little bit closer to home, maybe the Singapore campus would be appealing to you. And the Singapore campus off offers uh, degree programs through partnerships in Singapore. In association with the Singapore Aviation Academy, Embry-Riddle offers part-time blended delivery graduate programs uh, specifically for working professionals. And our newest partnership with ERC Institute enables Embry-Riddle to offer part-time and full-time undergraduate degree programs to students who are looking to earn their bachelor's degree while working or before entering the workforce. And so again, Singapore is an opportunity if you are interested in studying at Embry-Riddle but you wanna stay uh, within Asia, maybe this is an option for you. You might have caught in one of the videos um, that we have incredible placement rate of over 94% of our Embry-Riddle students that have been surveyed are either employed or continuing their education within one year of graduation. So what that means for you as a potential Embry-Riddle uh, student in the future is that uh, we have many resources to help you find jobs. Um, and I can go over some of that information later um, in regards to CPT and OPT opportunities. Uh, maybe you've heard of these terms. I'll be happy to talk about those terms. Other Embry-Riddle fast facts, we have over 137,000 alumni around the world. And what that means for you is that your network is global and expanding, and that certainly leads to future job opportunities. I wanted to give you a visual of our employment outcomes where some of our students are going on to find employment after graduation. Um, and certainly our international students are eligible to work in the United States up to one to three years used, utilizing their OPT. Um, and so students um, can find opportunities uh, within the United States to work. Um, and so those opportunities will be through like I said, OPT or CPT, um, and students can work in the United States. Preparing for success, you might be interested in working on campus while you're a student, and students can work up to 20 hours per week during the school year, um, and up to 40 hours per week during um, breaks um, on campus. And so those jobs, again, are located on campus, um, and so you must actually be on campus um, working um, to be eligible for these opportunities. Let's talk about campus life and student activities next. And I have another brief video for you. Thank <laughs> you. 
So hopefully that video gives you a feel for what it might be like um, to be a student on campus with the extracurricular activities. We also offer athletic programs. So on the Daytona Beach campus, we are part of the NCAA Division II, which is the second most competitive athletic division in the United States. You'll see our athletic teams that are offered um, for both women's and men's sports. So if you have an interest in one of these athletic programs, you can certainly reach out to me and I can send you more information on how to become a student athlete at Embry-Riddle. Let's look at our activities at the Prescott, Arizona campus. Oops, sorry. Let me go back. Let's try this again. So you can see from that video some excellent um, fun activities for our students who are interested in studying at the Prescott, Arizona campus. Also, Prescott offers athletic programs just like the Daytona Beach, Florida um, campus, and they are part of the NAIA division, um, which is also a division that allows scholarships. So at both of our campuses, we do offer athletic scholarships and you will see the men's and women's athletic teams listed there. So again, if you are interested in becoming an athlete at Embry-Riddle, I'll be happy to send you more information. Um, all you have to do is reach out to me and hopefully I'll get your contact information at the end of this presentation as well. I'll be happy to send you more information. When it comes to clubs and organizations at the um, Embry-Riddle campuses, you'll see that we offer numerous clubs and organizations, and this is just a brief snapshot of what we have. At both of our campuses, we have over 100 different clubs and organizations, and if there's a club or organization that is not offered that you are interested in, the incredible thing is you can start your own club or organization. Uh, with that said, we have some interesting clubs and opportunities for students, like our skydiving club, uh, definitely, I mentioned to our international students that we have the International Student Programming Council, which is open to all international students to become involved and be active with fellow international students. Uh, with that said, certainly domestic students can and are involved in the International Programming Council as well. Um, and generally, they go on field trips, they explore um, around them, so um, there are many opportunities um, for exploring the area. Um, and then we have the Prescott um, clubs and organizations. Again, over a hundred different clubs and organizations. Um, certainly many revolving around outdoor activities because Prescott does have amazing opportunities for kayaking, mountain biking, rock climbing, you name it, they have it. Um, but also if you're interested in music, uh, maybe you're interested in a chess club, uh, 
we really do have a lot of opportunities for our students. I had mentioned um, OPT and CPT. Um, sorry, I, I didn't realize that this slide was a little later in the presentation, but let's go over this because this is an important question that many students have. And this applies not just to Embry-Riddle. If you decide to go to any institution in the United States, you will have an opportunity for CPT and OPT. So let's start with CPT. CPT stands for Curricular Practical Training. And what that means is an internship opportunity while you are an undergraduate student and you will get credit towards your degree program, hence the, the term curricular. So this is an opportunity for students to gain experience while doing, doing an internship in the United States. So you can have work authorization and work for a US company and gain some experience in the United States. And I highly recommend that students take advantage of this opportunity. Now, you might also be familiar with OPT or optional practical training. This is the work experience that you can obtain after you graduate. And there's an opportunity for anywhere from one year up to three years of working in the United States if you are part of a STEM program. Um, and so there are um, opportunities in the United States to work. Um, and usually you will find your work experience through networking. And um, at Embry-Riddle and actually many institutions in the United States, we have career service um, departments that are set up to help you find internships and jobs. And this is open to all students, domestic or international. So we have counselors who will help you with your resume, uh, counselors who will help you apply for internships and jobs. We also offer two different opportunities twice a year to um, participate in our job fair. So during our job fair, we have over 100 different companies come to our campus in search of Embry-Riddle students um, for internships and jobs. So this is an opportunity for you specifically as an international student to go talk with US companies that are interested in hiring Embry-Riddle grads. So it's an amazing opportunity for our students. You might have questions about tuition. Let's go over this next. At our US residential campuses, you'll see the total cost for undergraduate um, costs, including your room and board and all of the fees is approximately 51,000 US. And so to obtain a visa to come to the United States, you will need to prove funds for one year of study. Our graduate estimated costs are about 33,000 US per year, keeping in mind that a master's program is only two years, uh, a doctoral program is generally four years. When it comes to our worldwide online programs, uh, we do offer um, completely online programs and you'll see that the total estimated cost for one year of study online for Embry-Riddle is about 11,000 US dollars. And for graduate, it's approximately 9,000 US dollars. And let's talk about scholarships, because generally this comes up after you see the tuition fees. You're like, well, how could I have some help with paying for the cost of education? And at Embry-Riddle, we do offer international merit scholarships. And what this means is we are looking at the grades you had in high school, or if you're a transfer student, we're looking at the grades from your university. Um, but also, if you are um, a high school graduate, we do require you to take the SAT or ACT to be eligible for a merit scholarship at Embry-Riddle. These are partial scholarships. They won't cover the full cost of your tuition, but they certainly can help with the cost of your tuition. Let's move on to the admissions checklist. So these are the documents that we are going to need from you if you're interested in applying at Embry-Riddle. And frankly, whether you're interested in applying at Embry-Riddle or any university, you'll want to check out what documents they require. Each university is different, although generally we ask for very similar things. You're going to apply online. Um, there is a $50 application fee, but because you attended this uh, session today, I'll be happy to waive that application fee. All you have to do is email me and I'll send you more information on how I can waive that application fee for you. 
Um, the main things we're going to need from you are your official high school transcripts, okay? And in India, we generally don't require a foreign credential evaluation, which is an evaluation of your schoolwork outside of the United States. But we are very familiar with the Indian curriculum, and so generally you do not need a foreign credential evaluation. As I mentioned, SAT and ACT are only required for scholarship consideration. And I highly recommend if you are a good student with good grades, please take the SAT or ACT as we are able to offer most students who submit SAT or ACT do become eligible for our merit scholarships. And in most cases, Indian students, because their language of instruction is in English, most do not have to take TOEFL, IELTS or Duolingo. Um, so if your language of instruction is in English, we'll be happy to waive that requirement. And our graduate admissions process uh, follows a very similar process to our undergraduate. You'll see the checklist here. The main difference is that graduate students, in some cases, are required to take GRE or GMAT. And that all depends on um, the program of study that you pick for your graduate program. And here's just some general advice that I'd like to end the session with um, to give you an idea of what you should be thinking about and looking for as you're moving forward with your higher education degree. Um, become familiar with academic trends and employment options um, within your country. Explore beyond the obvious career paths. Consider the school's on-campus resources, including simulators if you are interested in flight. Find and read books that are about areas of interest to you. Know before you go. Keep an open mind. These are all important things, whether you choose Embry-Riddle or another institution in the United States or anywhere for that matter. So you know where you're going and we'll help you get there, whether it's flying an airplane, designing an engine, leading an industry, predicting the weather, or exploring outer space. We definitely have a degree program that you might be interested in. And as I mentioned, I'm going to leave you with my contact information. You'll see the, the Florida contact information here. Um, I will also share um, within the Q&A my personal email address. As I mentioned, I'll be happy to waive um, the application fee. In fact, what I will do is um, bring it to the first couple slides. Oops, let me start that over again. And um, you'll see my contact information. Um, give me one second. And so start thinking about your questions. I see already in the Q&A that I have a few questions to answer. So I'm excited about that. Please start to um, share your questions with me and I will be happy to answer those questions. Let me share my screen with my contact information so that as we go through the Q&A, um, I will be able to, um, you can reach out to me directly and you'll have my information. So it looks like we have about 16 questions. So luckily we have some time left in the presentation. I'm gonna go through these questions uh, as quickly as I can in hopes that I can answer everyone's question. So the first question, how would COVID-19 impact the teaching at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University for pilot training courses for our undergraduate program? It's a great question. Um, so Embry-Riddle has done an excellent job of responding to the pandemic. We've actually been open for months now. We opened for our summer B term and all students, staff and faculty must have a health check before they even step foot onto campus. That's the first thing you have to do is do your health check and you can do that all throughout campus. Um, and they make sure that you've done the health check. You get a special sticker that you add to your badge so that everybody knows that you've had your health check that day. We require masks throughout campus, whether you are outside or inside a building, you must wear a mask. And so when it comes to our pilot training, um, they are taking special measures to clean the aircraft before and after flight instruction. Um, there's space, everything's basically getting more space. Um, there's more time to clean things. Um, they're giving more space. Um, between instructors and the student pilot. So we are taking on all kinds of safety measures to keep our campus safe. We're also keeping a tally of our COVID cases. Um, and we 
our, we report those to the campus as a whole. And um, when, a, when a student or a staff or a faculty test positive, they're required to quarantine. Um, so I'm quite impressed with Embry-Riddle's um, operations when it comes to COVID. Let's move on to what would the possibility be of us combining a business program with an aviation program? And how can we do this at your university? Um, so great question. Um, and I would say that um, you, you have two options. One would be to do the aeronautical science program, the four-year bachelor's program, which combines your flight training and do a business minor. The other option is to do a business major at Embry-Riddle, but then keep in mind your flight training will have to be done off campus because the only program that allows flight training at this point is our aeronautical science program. And the reason for that is that our flight program has become incredibly popular and we only have so much airspace and so many airplanes. Um, even though we have over 100 aircraft, um, this is a very popular program. So I would say if you are interested in Embry-Riddle's flight program, please, please, please apply early. And by that I mean at least nine months prior to the start of the term, work with me directly. I wanna make sure that you get to pursue your dreams. So apply early, submit all of your documents early. That gives you the best chance. Um, let's see, would there be any difference in the learning experience between the two campuses? So, um, as you're aware, I showed you the two different residential campuses and we have the Singapore campus. You know, the main difference when students ask me this question is that they're two very ge different geographic regions. Um, just like I've um, visited um, India, a lovely country, um, it is very, very different. Um, New Delhi is very different from Mumbai, from Pune. Um, you know, it, it just is quite different. So research the two different campuses. Think about what program you're interested in studying. Think about what kind of lifestyle and where you want to live. Do you want a larger campus in Florida or a slightly smaller campus in Arizona? Keep it in mind, both campuses offer small classroom sizes. It's really up to you. Um, but the learning experience is going to be similar in the sense that we do offer many of the same degree programs at both campuses. But some campus, some opportunities in Arizona for programs are not offered in Florida or vice versa. So take a look at that. Um, can students pursue a dual major given the vast breadth of the aviation program? What are some recommended dual major programs? When students ask me this question, I often tell them that they really should look into what minors of study mean in the United States, because this is really how we deal with um, pursuing multiple areas of study in the United States. Rather than taking a dual major, I recommend doing a major and maybe one or more minors of study. Um, this is generally a better option for you as it may not necessarily extend how long it takes you to complete your program. If you do a dual major, you need to keep in mind that it may take you longer to complete your bachelor's degree than four years. So I just want to make students aware of that a dual major could take you more time. I don't want to um, discourage you from doing that because there are students that certainly pursue that. Um, but I just want to make you aware that sometimes it takes more time. Oh, here's a question about how many Indian undergraduate students um, would you have on your Daytona Beach campus and what programs do they pursue? So I would tell you that we have well over 100 Indian students on our campus. They are our third um, largest international population. Um, we have an Indian Student Association. Um, you are not going to be the only Indian student on either of our residential campuses because like I mentioned, it is one of our top populations. Um, from my experience working with Indian students, they do tend to um, stereotypically fall into the engineering fields and business. Um, but with that said, I, I think that we've had Indian students on our campus pursuing pretty much every degree that we have. So um, it, it really covers the gamut. Um, and I just will mention again, you won't be the only Indian student, that's for sure. Okay, which countries do you have international students from? Well, as you saw, um, I can't list 
the over 100 countries that we have represented. Um, but I can tell you our top populations are from um, South Korea is our top international population. Um, then I believe closely followed by, actually not so closely followed by China and India. Um, and, and then the, the, um, the other, you know, 90 plus countries, um, I couldn't possibly list them all for you, but um, many different students from Asia, that would definitely be our top continent um, sending students to Embry-Riddle. Okay, what would be the CPT and OPT length for aviation students given the practical focus of the degree? Okay, so CPT is internships, curricular practical training. Generally, that's for one semester. That could be a fall semester, a spring semester, or a summer semester. So it really depends. So we're talking CPT is usually a few months, okay? OPT, as I mentioned, um, is usually anywhere from one year to three years, depending on if you are in a STEM program. And so for aviation students, um, often they're looking for um, CFI opportunities, certified flight instructor opportunities. And those instructor opportunities are available to international students who want to be flight instructors on the Daytona Beach, Florida or Prescott, Arizona campus. Let's move on to, will it be possible to transfer from the first year of Singapore and then directly join the second year at Daytona? How would the admissions transfer of credits work? Um, that is a possibility for some programs. I can tell you that um, that's probably not the best option if you're interested in flight because our flight program fills up so quickly, they no longer allow the transfer between um, campuses. Um, so with that said, if you're interested in one of the other programs, 100% you can study at the Singapore campus and then come to Florida or Arizona. But keep in mind, you'll wanna work closely with your academic advisor, letting them know your plans to come to a residential campus. And the reason why I say that is that um, each program is different depending on the campus, meaning the Arizona um, software engineering program is going to be very similar, but not exact to the Daytona Beach, Florida campus. Therefore, let's say the aviation business program in the Singapore campus might offer somewhat different classes than what is required at the residential campus. So again, you'll want to work very closely with your advisor and let them know your plans for coming to the United States. Would the part-time opportunities include work with the faculty and help us cover some living expenses? There are opportunities um, to work with faculty. Um, generally, working with faculty is for, excuse me, is reserved for graduate students. Um, but with that said, I'm sure that there are some opportunities as undergraduates to work with faculty as well. And the part-time job opportunities um, can definitely help you with living expenses. But again, they're part-time opportunities, so they're not going to fully cover your living expenses, but they can help for sure. Next question, is it possible for Indian students to join the college sports teams and extracurricular activities, or is it difficult? It's not difficult at all. All of our activities, all of our sports teams are open to all students, domestic and international. What is the student faculty ratio and what is the ratio to domestic, domestic to international students on your campus? Um, okay, so the student to faculty ratio um, generally I think is about 20 to one. Um, so 20 students to one faculty member. Classroom sizes are generally 25 students or less. So you're going to have small classroom sizes. You're going to have access to your professors. Um, and I mentioned our international student rate is about 17% of our overall population. And at the Prescott, Arizona campus, I believe, um, I believe it said 12%. Um, so those are pretty large um, percentages when you compare that to other US institutions. Let's go to the next question. Will the work experience opportunity be part of our program or during vacation time? So um, I'm trying to think of how to answer that question. For the internship, so let's say you wanna do an internship. You can do that over the summer. And over the summer, you're not required to be a full-time student. 
so you could take advantage of the summer term to do an internship. Um, and OPT is after you've completed your program of study, so that's not vacation time, that would be after you study. So um, it really just uh, depends there. Okay, let's go to the next question. Regarding the internships, would, be, would they be offered and related to our major? Absolutely, in fact, they're required. So the internships and opportunities that you find must be related to your degree program. Next question, can you please share the living expenses while studying in Florida as well? Um, yes, absolutely. So um, let's flip to that slide so that you can see that sometimes visually it's easier to see costs like that um, when they are laid out in front of you. Okay, so you'll see at the U.S. residential campuses, room and board, the total cost is approximately 12,000 U.S. Next question is, what would be the scholarship opportunities for international students. Um, as I mentioned, there are merit scholarships based on SAT or ACT and also your grade point average. They are partial scholarships. They range from $2,000 per year up to about $15,000 per year. So they won't fully cover your tuition, but they certainly can help you with your cost of living. And will the admission scholarships carry forward for each year of the program? Yes, they will. So as long as you aren't put on academic probation, those scholarships are renewable each year. When do admissions begin for the next year and what are the deadline to submit the documentation? When will we receive our admission decision? Okay, so let's start from the beginning. It's ideal to apply to Embry-Riddle anywhere from six to nine months before the start of the term. And as I mentioned, aeronautical science, you especially want to apply early and submit all of your documentation. We have pretty flexible deadlines um, other than the aeronautical science program, um, meaning that as long as you can get your visa in time, we will usually grant you admission um, and give you time to get your acceptance letter and your I-20, but we wanna give you plenty of time to get your visa. So um, there's, the short answer to your question is, it's ideal if you have applied, submitted all of your documents, and been accepted at least three months prior to the start of the term. This gives you plenty of time to get your visa. And generally, once we receive all of your documents, so let's say you've submitted your final transcript, that's the last thing needed on your list, you'll receive an admission decision usually within one to two weeks. Sometimes it's days. It really just depends on how busy we are. I would say generally you're going to hear from us in five to seven business days. Okay, I would like to learn more about housing and the meal plan options. Can you please share information on the Indian food dining options, if available, nearby campus? Um, we definitely have several different um, Indian restaurants. Um, not only in Florida, I'm sure the Prescott, Arizona um, campus also has Indian food options. Um, we have Asian grocery food, um, grocery stores where you can buy um, specific foods and spices and things like that. Um, not to mention at the Florida campus, we're about an hour away from Orlando where there are tons of food options. Um, so there's definitely, um, there's definitely options for you. Um, and we offer Indian food on campus as well. Um, we have kind of a rotating ethnic um, section within um, our you know, food court area. Um, you can find more information on the web. Go to the housing section. You can learn more about the meal plans. And if you have specific questions, please reach out to me directly. I can send you more information. Okay, what would be the safety at the Daytona Beach campus and the Prescott campus and the safety of the city? That's a great question. That information is also very transparently put on our website so that you can see um, the safety record at both of our campus. Campuses, um, generally I will just tell you that both campuses are very safe. Um, I've been on campus at night by myself walking around. I feel very safe, especially because we have our own um, safety office 
Um, so we have officers that are patrolling the campus, making sure things are locked up at the end of the night, making sure everything is safe. Um, and you can contact safety at any time. For instance, um, like let's say I've been locked out of my office. They are available 24 seven. Um, they will help me get into my office. They will help you um, be escorted across campus. Let's say it's dark and you just don't feel comfortable. Um, you can call campus safety. They will escort you across campus. There's also emergency stations throughout campus. So um, let's say you did feel unsafe. You can go to one of these stations, hit a button and campus safe is, safety is notified right away as well as the uh, police station as well. What are the minimum grading requirements for gaining an admission and scholarships to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University? So for scholarship consideration, um, a minimum requirement of a GPA is 3.3. And I would say scholarships start with SATs at 1200 or above. So that's what you should shoot for. I see we're getting close to the end of our time. Luckily, we only have three more questions. So if it's okay, I'll try to get through these questions uh, in the next couple of minutes. Um, can you please discuss a little bit more about your essay and letter of recommendation requirements? This is actually not required. Um, I have students submit essays and recommendation letters and that's wonderful, but generally I only ask for uh, essays and recommendation letters if a student doesn't meet our general 3.0 requirement. Um, but again, you're welcome to send those to us. Um, I know many students already have those completed. They want to send them. Please do. We're happy to have them. Okay, how much access will I have to faculty members as a bachelor's degree students? I would say you're going to have a lot of access. Um, as an Embry-Riddle alum, I had a ton of access to my professors at the undergraduate level. So um, definitely don't feel like just because you're an undergraduate student, um, faculty won't meet with you. That's not the culture at Embry-Riddle um, at all. The faculty is very accessible. Okay, final question. You mentioned the length of our program would increase for dual majors. How much would it increase in terms of the duration of my degree and tuition fees if I double major or if I choose one major and one minor? Um, so I can't give you um, a definite option on that or, or the exact information on that. You're going to work with your academic advisor and you are going to have your own dedicated academic advisor. They are experts in helping you um, set the track for your four years and they can help you figure out what is the best option for you. They can help you with the cost. Um, so generally speaking, um, I would just say work with your academic advisor um, and they can give you advice on the minor versus the major, how much extra time it might take you, how many more semesters. Um, so there's no easy fast answer to that. But if let's just say you take an additional one year of study you need to keep in mind that you will pay for that additional one year of study to get your dual major. So that's the best answer I have for you right now. Um, but with that said, it's right at 11 o'clock. I've answered all of the questions. Um, I want to thank you for your incredible participation and your interest. Um, what a wonderful opportunity to meet with you. You've asked excellent questions and let's keep the conversation going. Please reach out to me after this presentation I'll be happy to waive your application fee and answer all of your questions. Thank you so much, Tara, uh, for providing right. such rich insights, uh, you know, about the session topic and, of course, about the institution, Embry Dill and Nautical University. Uh, really appreciate you taking your kind time out of your very busy schedule to uh, be with us today and uh, uh, spend this hour with the 12th grade students, parents, and high school counselors. If I may kindly request, could you please put your email address in the chat box, if that's okay? Uh, we yes. typically typically stay back for about five minutes once the program is over, just in case, uh, so that students may quick uh, can write it down at their own pace. You know, sounds good. Absolutely, and uh, students, parents, counselors, twelfth grade students, parents, counselors, counselors, especially this session is recorded, so and uh, will be shared with your school. So other students who are not able to join us today uh, due to their schedule, uh, please do feel free to share the recording of the session with them and their parents as well. Uh, so that uh, they can learn more about the session topic and, of course, learn more about Embry Riddle Aeronautical University, uh, Daytona Beach campus, and uh, uh, be in touch directly with Ms. Uh, Tara Good uh, for future application and admission purposes. 
but having said that thank you so much uh, to uh, the counselors for having the students participate thank you to the parents and students of course we know it's a long day after your school so for joining us and a very big thank you to miss tara good as well for uh, agreeing to host this session and uh, spending one hour with us for this workshop we truly appreciate your kind time and uh, sincerely look forward to keeping there please take care stay safe uh, to you and of course your family as well thank you namaste thank you. namaste again take care bye bye, bye, -bye. thank bye. you